welcome to Service Station TV. This video is intended for support users of Service Station and will show you how to navigate your group's tickets, review an incident and a request, communicate to the requester, and close an incident and a request. Let's begin from the default ITIL homepage that every ITIL support user has access to. First, you can see that I'm in the test instance of Service Station, but you will use the production instance. You can get to the back end from the portal and then click on Portals Back End. Once in the back end, you can see that I use Home Pages and I have mine set at the ITIL homepage. If you don't see this drop down menu, then you are set to use Dashboards and you will need to navigate to Settings, General, and select Home Pages. I also have my screen set to Tabbed Forms which will show my screen a little differently. You can select tab forms by going to forms and selecting it here. Okay, let's X out of here and refresh the screen. Click on the drop down and select ITIL homepage. This homepage will show the total tickets assigned to your group, unassigned tickets, active tickets, R tasks, and more. The first section shows my group's active incidents. Here you can see important information such as when it was created, last updated, who requested it, and a basic short description. The additional comments section here will also show you comments the requester added. Okay, let's open an incident and go through how a support user would work the ticket. The first fields to notice are when the ticket came in and who it is for. I can also see at the top of the incident an attachment the team member added and I can click to view to see the details. Clicking on the icon next to the contact will show specifics related to that team member. Before I start on this ticket, I want to see if this user has reported any other issues that I need to be aware of. I can click here and show related incidents. Please keep in mind that this only shows incident tickets and not any other type of ticket. You can pull that information by creating a report or performing a search. The service field is specific to each team and is used to categorize the incident for reporting purposes. It may also require additional fields to be entered by the fulfiller. For example, the service of Service Desk is used by the Help Desk and Desktop Support, and they have a process to follow to categorize those tickets for reporting. You can click here to search for all services, and then after selecting, you can see the corresponding category and subcategory. If your team does not have a designated service, you can contact the Service Station team to have that set up. The Primary CI is another field where you can select the application that is having an issue. This list of CIs is based on what service is selected. Source shows how the ticket was created. This one was from the portal. Assigned group will show the which team received the ticket. Reassignment count will show how many times the ticket was reassigned. If reassignment was zero, then this ticket would have gone directly to the group above, but I reassigned it for this demonstration. If there is a high reassignment count, then it is best practice to pay extra attention to what the user is requesting. Incident state is very important and should be updated when working the ticket. Short description will show you a brief summary of the issue. This field is also a knowledge search bar and will display results in knowledge results section. I can click to view the articles and attach those to the work notes. The description should include all the information you need to work the ticket. Now let's scroll down to the notes section. Here you will see if anyone is added to the watch list, work notes, are here for the support worker to add details regarding the ticket and they are only viewable to other support users and not seen or sent to the requester or watch list. Additional comments customer visible is where the support worker would communicate in the ticket to the requester. 
adding comments will send the requester and anyone on the watch list an email notification. The users can also see these comments by going into the portal, My Tickets, and opening up the ticket. Let's look through the activity stream by starting from the bottom and scrolling up. Here you see specifics on how the ticket was created and where it routed to. This section will show what options the requester selected on the portal form and stores it in the work notes field. You can see any other comments and attachments that have been included. Please keep in mind that if you, the support user, adds an attachment to be sent to the requester, that they can only view that attachment by going into the portal, My Tickets, and opening up the ticket. The attachment will not be included in the email notification from additional comments. However, if you want to send the requester an attachment via Service Station email, then you would scroll to the top and click on More Options. Here you can select Email. The Compose Email screen will display And there you can add an attachment and details. Please note, it is not recommended to change the subject field. Doing so could jeopardize a reply from being added to the ticket activity. Now let's work the ticket. To begin, I'm going to assign the ticket to myself. And since I'm going to immediately start working it, I will also change the state to reflect the current status. I'm going to add a comment to the user and I will save the record. Since I'm now waiting for something from the user, I'm going to go ahead and change my status to awaiting user information. Let's review a few more fields in the incident form. You can see here next to the notes section is a tab called item variables. This tab shows all the fields in the form the requester selected. Related records is used to relate an incident to a problem record. Problem records are worked by specific groups in service station. Additional info has fields that can be utilized to store details. Also, based on your assignment group or a contact's company, additional tabs may display for those specific support teams. Also note that any field in a ticket can be reported on, and we have knowledge articles available in Service Station Find Answers to get you started on creating reports. Closure information will display additional fields once we resolve the ticket. Scrolling down, you can see the SLAs related to this incident, and if they have breached or not. Another important tab is the metrics tab and will show you additional details such as how long a ticket was assigned to a specific group. Now let's see if an update came in on the ticket we've been working. As you can see, the user has commented and confirmed he's working and I can close the ticket. I'm going to scroll to the state field and change this to resolved. Now I have mandatory fields to fill out to categorize the incident. Based on the service I used earlier, I have the baseline cause and close code and close notes that I must fill in. Lastly, I will save the incident. Please note, the incident will remain in an active state of resolved for 72 business hours. In that time, the requester can reopen the incident. If the requester reopens the ticket, it will retain the ticket assignee and add a comment to the additional comment section. Best practice on a reopened ticket is to review the notes section and communicate 
back to the team member. Okay, now that we have resolved the ticket, let's see what else we have waiting. You know, this time I want to work out of a list view instead of my home page. So here I'm going to type service desk and it will show me all the options under service desk. I'm going to click on my group's unassigned work. Here are the tickets displaying in the list view. If I want to update any of these columns, I can do that by clicking here, selecting the available comments, moving them over, and then clicking OK. Be sure to save and your view will be updated. Now, let's work a request ticket. These are known as an R task. The R task has two other tickets associated with it. Those are an R item and an REQ, but the support worker will always work the R task. I can see who requested the ticket and if it was opened by someone else, which in this case, it was not. The item field shows what form was selected from the portal. I will scroll down and see what information the user filled out by reviewing the variables section. I will also scroll to the attachment section as these are located at the bottom of the request ticket, unlike in an incident. I can see that he had added an attachment. I'm going to assign this ticket to myself, change my state, and I'm going to send the user a message in the additional comments field. I'm going to refresh my screen and see if the team member has responded to my comment. Here's John's comment confirming that he has what he needs and I can close the ticket. I'm going to change the state to close complete. And since our tasks do not have a separate close notes field, it is best practice to always add an additional comment and save. That's it for viewing and closing an R task. Now that you've learned how to view your group's tickets and work incidents and requests, let's go over best practices when using Service Station. We have many articles in the Service Station knowledge base that you can search for them by going to the portal and typing a keyword. Let's look for best practices article. I'm going to type best practice and enter. And here you'll see the service station best practices for ITIL users. Here you can go through and read all of our recommended best practices. We also have related articles at the bottom. You can also see all of our content by going to find answers, service station help, and reviewing all of the information provided to you. If there's information that is missing that you would like to see, please, Go to the portal and contact us by clicking the Contact Us button at the bottom and select Contact the Service Station Team. Thanks for watching.